Three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? This is the Undefeated by Choice podcast brought to you by Still Fist, and I am here with this weekend's second half of the main event, Mr. Cash Nicholas Martinez. Hey, yeah, Did I get yeah. that right? Yeah, on point. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it. Just to, uh, again, a correction. I don't know how I got blamed for the, the, the mess up last time. That was all Dave. That was all Dave. I promise. I did not tell him to give you, I don't even know what name he gave you, but it wasn't Cash. So Dave, if you're watching this, give this man his correct nickname. No, it was just a mix up and I get butt hurt. For the first like 10 minutes, I take it all sore and then, you know, I get over it. You know, mistakes happen. I make them too. But, yeah. you know, it was just a kind of a bigger thing because uh, I love my kids. Yeah. My yeah. son, his name is Cash, Nicholas yeah. Martinez. Yeah. And, like, uh, when I tell them, you know, that's the name they're going to call, you know, hearing it on the, the microphone in yeah. the stadium and everything, you know, it just lights him up. Yeah. So when it didn't quite happen, he's still cool, you know. Yeah. going to be five next month. Yeah. Well, I, we're, we're, I'm, well, I can't make any promises, but I'm telling you right now, I have nothing to do with it. And if Dave messes it up, you get to fight him in the cage next time. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not going to happen. No, no, that sounds like a setup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, we won't. We won't do that. But, you know, maybe coming out and being mad was a good thing because you went out and won the fight. So maybe that little bit of extra anger was a good thing for you because you went out and won that fight in the first round. It was yeah. a beautiful win. Oh, thank you. So, um... But, you know, just to get this started, we're, you're fighting this weekend. You're fighting uh, February 21st, Still Fist, uh, the Rectify card. Thank you for driving out here, coming to do the show. Um, you're awesome coming out. Not everybody likes making that drive, and especially today. It's like a rainy day. Was it, was it a safe drive? Everything good? Um, Utah's not a safe drive in the first place, <laughs> but it's about as safe as it can get. Yeah, okay. Well, I appreciate it coming back. And it's funny that you said, uh, you are saying Utah's not a safe place. You didn't grow up in Utah, right? Uh, not until high school. Okay. So, and then that's the thing, like, I, like, I still say, like, I've said this before, you're like the mystery man. You're like the, the guy that people are like, well, you know, I can't find a lot of tape on him and this. So just let us know who Nick Martinez is. Let, like, give us, give us like where you were born, just kind of your story, how you got into fighting, how, how this all came about, you know, how we got to the point where now you're main eventing still fist cards. Uh, wow. Wow, that's a huge question. We got time. <laughs> um, I think to say who's Nick Martinez, I'm not even 100% sure who I am all the time. You know, sometimes I'm the dad. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'm the, the, the businessman going to work every day, working 50 hours a week. Sometimes I'm Nick Martinez, the fighter. Sometimes I'm Nick Nar Martinez, the husband. I mean, there's a lot of different dynamics to who I am. But... Um, to, to kind of sum it all up, whatever I do, I wake up and I try to be the best at all of it. You know, yeah. my family before anything, it doesn't matter what job I have or what fight I have coming up. I want to make sure my family feels loved and appreciated because that's my number one goal in life. Absolutely. And uh, after that, you know, you got to make the money. So the job is of high importance. You know, uh -huh. I love what I do. I, I weld, I fabricate, I built roller coaster, I have built treatment plants. I, we got to start building bridges and structure stadiums and stuff. So it's just really cool because I'm putting my mark in this world like I can go to Lagoon and I can show you every piece of that ride that I built you know yeah. so that's that's fun that I can take my kids to that and show them that hey yeah I, that's I, cool yeah makes me feel significant yeah and then on top of that the fighting it, it's always been a passion it's always been a dream I mean it, I don't know if a lot of people know this but I feel like the fight community is filled with a lot of nerds and geeks <laughs> you know it started uh, you know fighting when I was young in Ninja Turtle and you know I lived out in a not so good neighborhood in California, out in North County, San Diego. And, uh, you know, I'd fight with all the neighborhood kids, I'd go to school, we'd fight with all the little gangbangers. I thought it was all fun and games. Yeah. And it turns out they were serious. I was like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> but uh, move on. And then, like, I went from that and having to hold your own. I got into Dragon Ball Z in, like, my preteen years. Who's your, who's your man? Who's your man? I, Dude, who doesn't go for Goku? I mean, I, I, I can't argue that. Vegeta, not Vegeta, um, Trunks was my boy. Yeah. yeah I liked it because he had a sword. He was a uh, Super Saiyan, but he also had a sword. Like, it's just that bone, that added bone. I'll nerd out. I'll nerd out. We, 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 watch, we would watch that, but okay. Yeah, sorry. I had, to, I had to jump in there once I heard that. I got a little excited. Okay. Yeah. I'll go back. Yeah, that's a great show. <laughs> we'll get into that later on after the interview. Okay. Um, no, but it, it was just cool. It started getting me into fitness 
and wanted to work out and, and all that stuff. And then the more like in the stupid, the TV show, uh, Goku would train with weights. Like he'd throw punches with weights. He'd have weights on his ankles and stuff. And I started doing that and I got into a fight at school after using the weights and stuff. And I threw this right bink, and the kid just crumbled. And I was like, that's dope. And you know, it just kind of stuck into my head Yeah. and just growing up, just people would step on my toes. I wouldn't take it, you know, and I was kind of a knucklehead in high school too, you know, at fighting that long, you know, somebody looking at me funny, like, okay, what's up now? Let's <laughs> yeah. just take care of it. Yeah. Skip all the BS. Yeah. And you know, I've gotten tooled a lot of times too. It wasn't always winning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd take my lumps. We'd look at each other like, okay, let's not do that again. <laughs> so, so, and then it just kind of transitioned, you know, I, I got booted out of two different schools for fighting and, uh, you know, teachers like, oh, that, that'll never solve anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll never turn out to be anything worthwhile doing that. And, you know, I disagreed with them. I was like, sometimes fighting is the answer. You know, sometimes words aren't enough. Sometimes yeah. you have to enforce stuff physically. I mean, look at police, you know, they, if they just said freeze and everybody listened, it would be a lot better place. Yeah. And they wouldn't have to do these extreme things and be put in these terrible situations. You know, um, same with people talking to, to authority figures as well. You know, if it was both just a respectful thing where you could use words and everything was peaceful, you know, it'd be fantastic. But sometimes you have to have that capability in order to show what you can do in yeah. order to create peace. Yeah. You know, and um, then you get into cage fighting where it's not about really violence to me it, it is an out you know you mm -hmm. do blow off a lot of steam you get tired you show your muscles blah 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 you know you, I believe you gain respect with it but I believe it's two martial artists yeah. showing their talents like yeah. this is how hard I've done it let's see where I'm at yeah you know yeah. and uh, that's kind of where I'm at with it today you know like I started fighting and it was about violence and then the more I got into it the more I learned respect the more I got humbled the yeah. more I realized that and this is just another competition yeah it just happens to have a lot of blood and banging out and stuff so yeah no I love that and I, I love you know that that whole thing like it did start out as violence and it was a way to you know protect yourself it was a way to you know to, uh, to, it was just part of your life growing up and, and the violence was a part of it and then once you got into it you realized oh this is something bigger it's something better and it teaches a discipline it's funny I was um, I was I was I went out last night after the <clears throat> after the fights for another organization whose name will will remain will remain nameless at this point but I went out after the fights and um, and I, I was talking to this girl and she's like, Oh, we just got back from the ballet. We dance, we dance for the ballet. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. I was like, I was watching another dancing performance. It was fighting. And she, and she 100% agreed with me. She was like, Oh yeah, that's so awesome. She's like, and I, I, I've, I've described fighting as a dance so many times. You're, 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 you're moving, you're flowing. Uh, sometimes one person takes charge. The other time, the other person takes charge. You're both battling for position. And it is absolutely like, I'm, I'm always like this, is martial arts this is an art this is dancing this is art you're painting a picture with your skills like and so like to look at it more than violence because at the if you just you know glance at it yeah it's two people throwing punches and kicks and elbows and all that there's blood but if you really pay attention to it it's absolutely art and and to see people like yourself who show that type of respect towards the game and to know that it did not always come from that part you know you didn't grow up doing martial arts to the point where it was like you were instilled that youth this is this is respect but you learned it along the way in doing it that's that's awesome um and uh and uh yeah there, and and so you know talking you saying that you were a knucklehead and you're you know getting into fights and stuff it's just funny to see what martial arts has done to you because as much as i've known you i've never seen any of the knucklehead <laughs> i've never seen it you know i've never seen any of that the first time i ever ever had any contact with you and i, I mentioned this last time was when uh me and eric munoz were walking past you at one of the fights and you reached out and grabbed him and then you stood up and shook his hand and you know smiled at him and i was like oh who's who's that guy he's like oh it's the guy i'm fighting next and i was like what <laughs> And I was like, he just, I'm like, do you know him? And he's like, no, nah, not really. And I was like, wow, that was, I was super impressed with that. I was like, cause you know, you just see so many people who have to be mad and they have to be angry and they have to go in and, and you just, you know, at this time you're like, no, we're going to fight. And but it's good to meet you and know, whatever you did your thing. And I was like, it was, it was super respectful. So like, I'm glad to see like that knucklehead is, is gone. You're just a good, respectful guy now that, yeah. I, you know, I can appreciate that. Um, it, it, has that, you know, what, 
what, like, what is that, um, like, in your life, knowing how you grew up, knowing how you were tested, and, and then knowing how you can control that now, and you're, you're, you're a respectful guy, you're respected in the MMA community, how does that feel? Um, a lot of times I don't feel worthy. A lot of times I feel like there are so many great guys out there, like just as much respect as I put out there, I see it back just as much, if not more. So it makes me want to be more humble. I want to help out other people. I, I want to be a good person. I want to contribute. I want to see great things happen with this because it is such a great thing. It brings a lot of people together for kind of a off thing. But I mean, it, it's a fantastic thing that these many people can come together and we can get along. It gets wild for a little bit. It's yeah. like, okay, yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then it's back to like, hey, let me help you open up your door your arm seems a little jacked you know? yeah yeah so yeah. well and and that leads perfectly into one of the questions i was going to talk about um you know last night there was, there was a situation where a fighter just got a little ex little overboard with his celebrations and i was sitting there thinking like what you know we know you're going to celebrate a win you know you're excited you the emotions and and but at one point the crowd was letting him you know he was he was you know dancing he was celebrating and at one point the crowd just decided okay you've done enough and now we're now we're going to turn on you so they started booing him every time he tried to talk they were booing him where do you do you, and do you have in your mind like where you think the line is where you think the line is like e either like just when you go okay now you've gone too far now it's offensive now you're disrespectful I think it's a case to case scenario. Um, you know, if you guys have bad blood, like you look at the, the top UFC fighters, I mm -hmm. mean, biggest one, Conor McGregor. Yeah. Uh, even though we're martial artists, we're, we're still out here. Everybody wants to see a fight. So we got to put on some level of display. Uh -huh. You know, you want to talk trash, you want to talk trash. Cool. That That's fine. If that's the way you do it and that's the way you want to do it, we can do that too. Yeah. You know, some people just don't like people. Okay. You want to talk trash on me? Fire me up. Great. It's going to just escalate from there. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't stop. So there is a, a degree of showmanship that you have to put out there or, or uh, be somewhat of an entrepreneur and sell the fight with yeah. you know, trash talk, you know? And, um, you know, but at the same time, me, myself, I can, only, I can only speak for myself that, you know, you don't need to get in a guy's face after you just tooled him. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's your moment. You <clears throat> celebrate it, love it, live it, do it. But I mean, at the same time, you don't have to belittle somebody in order to build yourself up. Yeah. You know, you talk trash before and then you fight, you tool him. Okay, yeah, you talk trash after. Like Conor McGregor, like I said, he yeah. talks big trash, but he's out there icing people left and right and he backs it up. But even at the same time, with as much as he is that much of a, a, a jerk and a showboater, he also comes in there like after the Nate. Diaz fights yeah. second time you yeah. know they hugged yeah they left it in the cage yeah and that's where it should be left is in the cage yeah it doesn't have to drag out to the parking lot or you don't have to get in somebody's face yeah yeah even after the uh, you know that cowboy fight he went up and hugged him I think the only fight that he didn't hug his opponent was Khabib <laughs> and we know why because Khabib wasn't even in the cage at that point yeah. but what's your favorite part of of you you just won you know the ref has just separated you from that until the moment you walk out of your cage until the moment you walk out of the cage what's the best part in that in that time uh, for me i mean everybody goes out there and they want the win uh -huh. you know it, for me it settles my nerves like i'm, I'm high intensity I'm, i obsess over things like with this fight every fight <laughs> i obsess i think about it i go to sleep thinking about it i dream about it i wake up i think about it i'm at work i'm thinking about it talking about it and then you know it's just the same with work and family you know it's just a cycle that i go through yeah. and whenever i have a fight coming up that is like front of my mind a lot of times and it takes me away from the other things but it, it places me where i need to be mentally for that fight because i'm like okay i'm not doing enough wrestling i'm not doing enough striking oh my god i've been doing striking wrestling now i need to work on my jits oh my gosh what about kicks high you know you just yeah. keep running through the whole scenario and finally when you get in the cage you're walking out you're like okay it's time this is what my training has been for and you know also the people that spend the time training with you you don't want to let them down you don't want to be like oh i've been training with this top name fighter and he's been spending all this extra time with me trying to help me get 
get here just to lose, you know, yeah. I feel like I let all these people down. Yeah. So like after it's all done, win, lose or draw, you know, you tried your hardest and that's the best you can do. But when you get the win and it's all done, like everything just calms down. Yeah. And when you have that win, you get a walk away saying, yeah, you did it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I can relate to that 100 percent. I remember, you know, after after I won, uh, I would I, I, I just I let out the scream like the moment the ref separated us, I got up and I went into the corner and I just ah, I just yelled it out. And I literally that was like all the all the all the everything that you just mentioned, you know, your teammates, your work, thinking about it all the time, obsessing over it, blah, 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 everything was like, I don't have to have any of this in me anymore. Like this is all gone. So I like, I like yelled it out and it was like, that was like the moment I was like, Oh, I, I could live for this moment. Like this is the greatest moment. Just because then I was just like, everything was done. It was over. I crashed. Yeah. I was, like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm some ice. I want to go home. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I, I completely know where you're coming from on that. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, so as we were talking about the uh, the the celebration, you know, I was yeah, it was um, it was a t it was a it was a very strange situation just to see the crowd go. Okay, now now you've done too much because at first they were like, okay, okay, and then finally they changed. And I just I was like, man, what was the what was the turning point? Like, which dance move was it that pissed him off to the point? Because he just kept doing different dance moves over and over and just different things. And finally they were like, okay, we've had enough. And you know, that's that's uh, you know that it, there was. Quite quite a bit of discussion about it there was quite a quite a quite a lot of talk uh on social media everyone was like no that wasn't cool but i do have to say that the fighter owned up to it you know and, and that was respectful too and then the the his opponent spoke up as well and was like you know i we have emotions man and they run high and you make mistakes and you do dumb things and he, he actually was like you know basically saying like you need to lead with love like just yeah man we all we all make mistakes and we need to forgive each other and you know i'm not mad there's no skin off my back so it was actually a real cool learning moment for the community and and uh for everybody involved so i, I you know it was it was it was cool to see uh the other thing i was going to ask you about i asked uh kindred about this yesterday is um you know, before the show started, we were talking about judging. Um, glad that we don't live in Texas with those with those awful judges. Uh, but one of the conversations that has come of it is, um, you know, I mentioned universal judging, which I think is would be a, a good option. But the other is uh, called open judging. Have you heard of this? Uh, I have not. So what what the thought is is you would know at the end of each round what the judge what the judge gave you that round so you could know in the third round you could know you're up two to one or two you know you're up two rounds or you could know it's one to one or you're down two uh so every at the end of every round the judges tell your corners or however the the message will get back to you as a fighter if you won or lost the round would you be in favor of that would you like that other idea or would that be too much like i have my opinion on it but i want to hear yours there's first. already so much going on and that's just a one minute in between rounds if i had somebody telling me some scores i would be arguing with them about the what yeah you know like uh, i watched the interview with cole and he said it great you know who can determine what significant strikes are uh -huh. and then like if you were to show me the card Hard and I disagree with it that would be in my mind like mm -hmm. oh, okay I'll show this and then there might be some people out there who oh I've already lost these two rounds that's what I have you know what? I might as well just give up yeah you know I yeah. don't think that would happen too often but I think it could discourage fighters or you know maybe I think it would definitely change things yeah. a lot and I'm not sure if it would be for the better yeah I, I think you and I are on the same page as this I, I you know there's so many people and because um, you know Joe Rogan and and, and Luke Tom Thomas and Chael Sonnen and everybody's talking about it right now. All the big, you know, the, the um, all the big MMA reporters, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, they th they're all talking about it. And I and I'm on the same page as you. Is you're in the middle of a fight and you know you got your you've got your corner talking to you, giving you direction during the fight, and you add on top of it. Oh, oh, by the way, they had you lose that round. Well, if your mind, if you come and sit on the stool and you think you just won that round, then you get told you lost that round, that's going to play mind games with you. That's going to make you be like, what? 
but I, what, what, am, what could I do? What more could I do? I just, you know, I feel like I was tuning him up and, and then they gave it to him and yeah, you know, I screwed this on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and exactly. You're going into the last round and you know, what's it going to do to, to game plans? You know, you might have a game plan. Your game plan might be to do something in the third round, but now you know, you're down two rounds. So you got to th- abandon game plan and just try to knock them out because you know that if it goes to the judges, you're going to lose this fight. And so, you know, you've got to go in and you've got to knock this guy out, but maybe sticking with your original game plan was, gonna, was what was going to make you win the fight. Like maybe, and there's so many variables that I was, I'm on the same page as you, man. And I was talking to Kendra and he liked it. He's like, I think that's a good idea. And, you know, I've been thinking about it all week. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I just, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's the solution. Um, you know, my, my, my thought is, is universal judging. I think that we could definitely make that happen to, you know, there's maybe multiple, multiple judges watching from all over the place. Um, not all of them are cage sides, you know, up, up against the cage. You know, Joe Rogan's like, there should be like 10 judges, which would be cool. I mean, it's job security for a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of people who need jobs, a lot of former fighters who need jobs. So that'd be, it'd be, that'd be, that'd be a cool thing. But even if you didn't have that, being able to watch it from a distance or see it from a different angle and, and have, and have a set of judges that you trust and respect and you know they come from a martial arts background rather than a boxing background because yeah. you know there's there's times that you know that like in that dominic reyes fight you know if you, if you say, okay let's say like you're a power puncher and you are fighting someone who just throws a lot of volume your power punches are way more significant than him just throwing volume on you like a you know, like a Nick or Nate Diaz just you know constant flow of punches a lot of their punches are not hurting but they're scoring points like crazy in a box with a boxing judge mm-hmm. that's not MMA that's not what we're doing you know so yeah I'm I'm, I'm uh I just went off on that tangent. <laughs> no, because uh, I agree, like, maybe open judging isn't the answer. Maybe parts of it that we can take yeah. and make a hybrid. Because I think maybe judging does need to be looked at a little bit different. Because we picked up, as MMA, we, we didn't really have any structure. And then uh, they started, they picked up the boxing 10-point uh, yeah. system, you know. So yeah. they had to pick 10-9, 10-7, whatever. And they have regulations. Maybe some places only let you go as low as 7. Some have to score at 8. But, you know. Know, there's all kinds of different with that but we picked it up as MMA we picked it up from boxing and uh, we kind of kept those guidelines but you know as MMA like I mean the sports still fairly new yeah you really look at it, I mean when when did the first UFC come out like 92 or something yeah I was young I know that yeah it was VHS <laughs> yeah still. Yes, so it was. So it's, it, I mean it's still really new if you look at like how long football soccer a lot of other sports have been out they've had a long time to structure it and figure it out yeah and we're still I think because Becoming more and more, um, more structured, more efficient, figuring things out. Like uh, so, I do th- feel like maybe they do need to find their own little changes. Just like the weight classes, you know, yeah. a big problem with it is people with weight cuts, and you see a lot of people coming in half dead. And I think that's one of the most dangerous things for fighters is coming in because when you get hit and you don't have enough fluid in your body from the day before from draining it, you know, it rocks you completely different. Yeah, you know, you're a different fighter. You're getting hurt more. You're kidneys your liver it can't take as much damage so yeah. you know you're not getting the best fighter that you could have in that cage and you know they, they say you can't have performance ad- enhancement drugs yeah that's great you know i agree with that you know you you, you want to take those out that's fine but then you're going to let people diminish their bodies in yeah. order to get into the cage so you'll let them go to the other side of the spectrum yeah you know but yeah you can't enhance your body and, and as a matter of fact you probably are most likely going to decrease all of your you know all of your motor functions because you are you know you drained yourself of everything that's a that's a funny point like not only are they taking away the enhancements but they're really taking away what you naturally have yeah, here's because, your disability yeah yeah because you know these weight classes yeah I, you know i think you know like every 10 pounds was you know is a, i think a great i think that's great i think anything within 10 pounds is is great and you don't have to be crazy if they you know you can uh, uh, that's what i do like about local promotions is there's a lot more catch weights mm-hmm. there's a lot more well you think you can make this way you think you can make this way okay good so i feel like with the local promotions you get a lot 
you get a lot better and a lot less people really putting themselves in the danger. But the problem is, is they do that and then they get the chance to go to the big show where you, they're not getting a catch weight from most likely. Yeah, no. And then their first fight or first couple of fights, they're drained. They, you know, they, cause now they have to make it. Now they're like, Oh, I, you know, I've been winning it, you know, 165, but now I got to get down to 155 cause there's not, you know, I, I can't go to 170. And so now you have to drop all that. And it's, you know, isn't that crazy? dangerous. Isn't that crazy? They're just like, it's like 125, 35, 45, 55. And then it's 15 pounds to 170 and then 15 pounds to 185. And then it's 20 pounds to 205. Yeah. Like, why is it such a big jump? What, where yeah. did they like, okay, we're going to pick up all this judging cards, but Hey, these weight classes. Pff, yeah. I got a better idea. Yeah. Let's make a ski wampus. Yeah. And throw it all over the place. And that's what's, and, and, you know, to that point, that's, what's crazy to me is that they, they do that. And, you know, everyone loves to see a knockout. Well, you're going to see the knockout at a 165. You'd see a knockout at a 190. You see, you know, you'd see the knockouts in these heavyweights. And everyone complains that there's no knockouts in 125, 135, 145, 155, you know. And then the ones, the, the, the weights that would actually give people what they really want to see, they don't even exist. So now you have less less chances to see what you really want to see and you just get you just get it's dangerous you know you, it's, it's dangerous when you have someone who i just feel i feel it's real dangerous you have someone who walks around naturally at 170 and they go okay i'm gonna fight at 170 and then they're fighting someone who actually walks around at 210 yeah and i, I heard this somewhere else it's like you got your 170 champion and then they weigh into the scale that day and they're like 195 how are you a 170 yeah. champion when you're weighing 195 yeah i get it you know you sacrifice to get there yeah but uh, do you feel true about that yeah. yeah you know and uh i think if they did more weight classes i think you would see more talent because how many people would cut weight to fight out of thing you know like yeah. these phenomenal fighters but because they were so fatigued that they did bad and they just pulled out or somebody thought yeah. bad of them and and then they just kind of like no this isn't for me you yeah. know we could have had so many more um talents out there yeah. you know and so many more options like you know 180 190 200 you do that, that i think that'd be great yeah and uh w with that too um you know, you got to also, where do you draw the line? Somebody's like, I need a 192.4 class. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's boxing, isn't it? You know, <laughs> yeah. boxing is crazy with their weight classes. Yeah, it gets out of control too. So I think it, it goes both ways, you yeah. know, and the commission, like, uh, in all kinds of different States, you see it backstage, like, you know, they really do have the fighter's best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's the fighter, when you're willing to make all these sacrifices that are dangerous, you know, the gaming commission does have things to kind of protect you as a fighter. You know, you may not like it at times, but sometimes it is for your best interest. Like they're starting to kind of watch people cut weight and yeah. they do see that like 35 pound jump. That's insane. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I'm, I'm not knocking it, but like they're starting to kind of follow that. They're like, Hey, you weighed in, you know, 185 yesterday, today you're 220. You know, what did you do? Yeah. You know, like yeah. you can't take uh, a steroids to, to get bigger, but you know, like a 40 pound jump, it's like, what's going on over there? Yeah. You know? And I, I think to get rid of all that riffraff is maybe a couple more weight classes yeah and 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 to, to the point of all this i really you know i had a long conversation and i believe it was either the last card or the card before with kevin and pat and they're like with all the dangers that come from uh, that we are seeing over and over again with all these big huge giant weight cuts and and just what it's doing to people we're not going to especially if it's an amateur fight we are not going to put our foot down and say you know you have to make this weight we're going to do what we can to try to make catch weights we're going to do what we can to try to make it safer for everybody because man if you're killing off all your fighters you have no product you know if you're killing off everybody it's 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 so dangerous and they really they were like no we're gonna we're gonna do better we're gonna do better and not trying to you know push these people to limits that obviously it's not doable or it's very dangerous if they do do it so i really was like I started working with the right guys. I started working with the right guys because, you know, they, they really do have you guys along with, as you're saying, along with the commission, they do have you guys best interest in mind. I, I, I truly believe that. So yeah. speaking of weight cuts, how is your weight cut coming along? You've got a fight in February. We've, we've talked about everything else. Now let's talk about your fight, man. How is, how's everything going with training and all of that? Uh, training's going fantastic. You know, uh, really putting in hard work, you know, for once you get to this, 
this many fights and fighting these uh, caliber of people I, if you're not doing a full fight camp where you're just exhausting yourself you know and getting yeah. it right dialing everything in i don't even know why you would be here yeah um you know with cole man i never want to be in his position with that last fight falling off day of that's like m next to getting broken injured i think that is my worst fear of fighting is like yeah. day of something going wrong you had all your friends your family you promote yourself and just that that fall off instantly man that that's terrible and uh Sorry, I put myself into that spot and I kind of lost where I was going nah, with it. You're fine. Uh, but, but with the camp and everything like that, you know, all that hard training and everything, um, you don't want it to go to nothing. And with Cole, I know he's coming in. You know, he, he kind of, I'm sure he's been training for his last fight and then kind of just went into this one. Like I, I watched the podcast yeah. and he said they kind of rolled into one. Yeah. It's like, cool, you know. Yeah. I'm sure he's tired of training and wants to fight. And I've been training nonstop for I don't think I've stopped for the last about year and a half, two years. Yeah. So I've been going kind of hard this last one, having some real big names come in and training with me that I really appreciate. Anybody, you know. anybody special, like anyone that you, you brought in, you know, obviously we know Cole's a wrestler, anybody you brought in to help you with that aspect or, or are you going to keep that, those cars close to the chest? You, um, don't have, you don't have to put everything out there. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, yeah, Cole's a wrestler, but I don't think we're just focusing on him being a wrestler because uh -huh. I mean, I, I've seen some of his fights. I've been to a lot of the shows and stuff like that. And he doesn't just like take you down yeah. and hold you there. Like you think a wrestler does. He, yeah. he's game. He'll yeah. stand there and throw some heavy hands with you. Yeah. And you know, uh, I'm sure he's been working on it. I've seen he uh, clicked up with Salt Lake Muay Thai, uh -huh. SLC Muay Thai and stuff, yeah. which is awesome, you know, um, because I'm a big stand up fan myself. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Muay Thai and him doing that, I think it's just going to make that fight more interesting, you know, yeah. because you know, he's got a good background for takedowns. And, and ground control and then him working that too it makes me like okay cool this is getting more fun this is yeah. getting realer <laughs> I need to step it up too okay yeah, yeah. Um, but no like uh, as far as like training partners uh, gyms and stuff I, I've kind of stuck with uh, Agima Jiu Jitsu and MMA and then also Wasatch Combat Sports and they work all MMA aspects yeah. all combat sport aspects it's not just Jiu Jitsu it's not just wrestling it's not just Muay Thai you know it's all wrapped in yeah. together and I think that is what I like about it because you can go to a boxing gym and you can go to a wrestling gym but to have that liaison that knows both that can kind of bring it together yeah. you know that's where MMA really gets fine tuned yeah. because you can be a phenomenal stand up guy and a phenomenal wrestler but if you're going up straight and then you're going down into your wrestling stance and dropping your hands it's, it's kind of defeating the purpose so having that well rounded uh, training in there is I think fundamental yeah I have to say the two dreams the two gyms that you train at are probably the and this has really nothing to do with fighting just my personal taste they're probably the two most beautiful gyms like the the Agima all white mats like when you guys post pictures I'm like that is a gorgeous place to work that would be like sanctuary like that looks that's a beautiful place and then Wasatch is just like they got everything like it's it's like it's like a uh, you know like the trampoline parks for little kids like they walk in they're like you know they're like what, 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 can I, what should I do first you know I feel that way when I walked into to Wasatch I was like I, there's so much stuff here so like I, I do have to, this is a side note they are gorgeous gyms so you, you got good taste yeah you got good taste well don't get it confused I mean I've trained in water dripping on your forehead <laughs> yeah. rolling on carpet before <laughs> people's basements like slamming into drywall and get <laughs> oops we'll, we'll patch that after yeah and just having the, the insulation all over your body itching I mean uh, I've been everywhere but no those facilities are extremely nice yeah. and like the the structure themselves are nice but the people inside the gyms man there's so much talent so yeah. much talent yeah and uh, the people are so friendly and welcoming i love it yeah yeah no i love i love seeing you guys post pictures of your little one out on the mat and you know i love family friendly places that's why you know why i stick with team link my, my daughter can run out there and their little kids just running around wild everyone's doing jujitsu and kids are just running around them and i'm like and there's no one you know waving their finger at them that's that's nice that's nice nice to be able to like you said you know sometimes you gotta sometimes you're your dad sometimes you're a worker sometimes you're this but it is nice when you get to kind of bring those things together absolutely you get to be a dad and you get and you get to train you get to do what you love to try to support that family so that's that that's really that's really nice um so do you feel um especially with this fight in particular i mean you're 
two fights leading up to this one were basically wrestlers who like to stand and bang. So do you feel like this is just a continuation of the of what you've been working on for the past you know fights coming up? Does Cole uh, pose any different, real different threats than than what you had in the two fights leading up to this? I mean, there's a lot of similarities, like you said, like uh, Eric and Hayden both had wrestling backgrounds, but I mean, there's no two fighters the same. There, there's no two fights exactly the same. I could be training all for for Eric, and I can't apply that to to Cole's fight. You know, it's just he's his own person. He has his his strengths, his weaknesses, and I really don't know because he's kind of hard to find tape on and stuff like that too. I looked for a little bit, couldn't find it. Like, okay, cool, we'll just figure it out as we yeah. go. You know? Yeah. Um, but but no, I, like I said, I, I'll sit there and I'll obsess over it. I'll feel like you know I'll be doing a lot of striking. Oh God, I got to work on my jujitsu. I'm gonna forget every move I've ever learned. And I always train like the fight's gonna last for two hours. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of crazy. It gets inside my head and I just keep going and going and you know and it's a great energy. People are like okay, he wants to do it and they see that and they come with it and they show me things and I do get that comfort of feeling very comfortable being well rounded. Yeah, yeah. Does um. Oh, right when you said well rounded, I lost my I lost my train of thought. I don't know why that why that threw me off. Wrestler background? Do you think oh, that's well, play I've been training? Well, yeah, yeah. Fighters have been similar. Yeah. Um, oh, you, you know, you were talking about you were talking about uh, watching tape and stuff. Is that something that you that you do often? Like, if you have the opportunity, are you watching? Because a lot of fighters, especially on the local scene, are like, nah, I don't watch tape. Is that something that you do do? Um, you know, if I can catch a tape, I will. But yeah. I don't ever bank on that tape giving me all of their secrets because right. whatever you're watching is a past them yeah like if you watch tape on me from and just even my last fight i'm a completely different fighter already i see the same tape you see those flaws so do i we're all working on it uh -huh, uh -huh. you know if you're focusing on that cool because so did i it's not gonna happen <laughs> so watch out so like the tape i feel like could be beneficial but i don't ever just put all my cards mm -hmm. on the table with that one mm -hmm. is there is there any part like any spot in this fight where you feel like you have like Again, we you know we go back to this like we have fighters like Cole. We're like, well, he's a wrestler. He's really good at wrestling. If he goes to his wrestling, he's going to have the advantage in that. Is there anything that you any part that you say this is where I have a clear cut advantage? If we get to this position, I'm going to have a clear cut advantage. Is there any part in your game where you feel like that is there's no question? If you go to that point, it's 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 for you. No, I feel comfortable in my abilities. Yes, yeah. like, um, but to say I can like just stick to this and I'll get Cole for sure or anything like that. No, no, he's a great martial artist. To say he's just a wrestler, I think that's taken away from a lot of his training because he's not just a wrestler. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I've seen him fight. You know, he's he's a he's a fighter. He's not just a wrestler. He's not just Muay Thai and stuff like that. And that's what gets me excited. Like you know, everybody tells me a lot of times like visualize the win, visualize the win, and with Cole. I visualize the fight. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just like don't see how how it's gonna end. I just don't know how it's gonna end. So like I just stay on my toes with my with all my training. Like I said, I just gotta keep rotating it because I'm not quite sure what exactly he's gonna bring, but I know he's gonna bring it. Yeah. Does, uh, does that so that I, what you just said is very unique because most fighters they do they visualize something being the win. You know this this my left hand landing perfectly, and you say you just you're just visualizing the fight. Do you feel that 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 is an advantage because you are not trying to bank on one thing and put yourself in a position to only get one thing you're saying this is a fight and whichever way I can end it I'm gonna take I'm gonna go I, I think that mentality helps because in MMA you, you you know you can think you have a game plan until you get punched in the face you know kind of cliche yeah. but 100% uh -huh. accurate uh -huh. you know you can't just okay he, he's a wrestler so if I just keep him on the outside oh I'll be okay and no uh, he'll be like this evil little crab that comes <laughs> in and grabs you and all of a sudden you're on the ground and you're like oh why did I train all this stand up because now I'm a turtle yeah, you know, yeah. Just, there's no one thing you can train non-stop and beat everybody you yeah. just can't you yeah. have to get everywhere else and I, I'm a big fan of cross training too you can't have the same partners yeah day in day out because you'll just learn each other's styles and then you just wait for them to make their move and then you know you just kind of yeah. capitalize on what you know about them yeah and then you go up against somebody who doesn't have that and maybe a, a not as talented person but because it's new and different to you you know it takes away from that muscle memory yeah you, so you're not thinking on your toes yeah yeah i can i agree with that Whole, wholeheartedly um has the fight slowed down for you yet have you or when you're in there is it still just 
mass chaos or has it slowed down to you yet where you're 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 comfortable enough to you're you're seeing things you're you're setting things up you're feeling things is because I, you know, I don't know when that comes. Some fighters is I. I feel like they came into the 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 um, they came into the octagon already comfortable, and some people it seems after ten fights, finally all of a sudden everything slows down. Are you at the point where it's still chaos, or is it slowed down yet? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> One fight you'll think that, and the next thing it's completely different. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. sometimes. Um, but my mind works a million miles an hour, so like I do th try to think things through as they're happening. Uh -huh. You know, th there's times where I was like, "Oh, I'm not going to do this," and as I'm moving, like he changed his game plan too, and I'm like, "Oh crap!" And then time to rethink it while I'm on my back. You yeah. know? Yeah. And um, so, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> have so anybody who hasn't been out to see a Nick Martinez fight, anybody who has has you know been living under a rock and hasn't been to a still fist fight in the past you know year and hasn't seen you fight what do they have to look forward to oh boy um a fight duh yeah. <laughs> that, that's one thing like uh, as technical as i am i i just have a a, a brawler mindset sometimes you know i just okay we're getting it we're yeah. getting it you know i try to be technical because that's what gets me the points that's what helps me land my shots takedowns submissions but really it's just like yeah it's a fightless fight you know yeah yeah and so if you like to watch brawls like, <laughs> yeah i love to exchange i love yeah. to take a couple and give some just be like yeah that's right yeah <laughs> For, and i and i haven't done this with anybody else but i do i haven't you know said what i what i think sells the fight for that person but for you i think anybody who hasn't been out to see a fight or someone who's you know kind of newer to fighting or whatever i think you are one of the people who to me because i've i've met you outside of the outside of the octagon so many times and i've seen you fight now you are the probably the epitome of someone who flips a switch and because you're you're so nice you're so personable you're so you know friendly and and willing to help i've seen you you know help break down the show and put chairs away you know i've seen i've seen you jump in and and then just be there for people but when you get in when you get into fight i'm like oh he's a fighter like i see the look on your face and i'm like oh he's a he's a fighter he's he's fighting he enjoys this he wants to do this he wants to get in and he wants to throw punches and he wants to hurt you in a good way yeah. but not you know not to end anything but to, to, he wants to to show off his art and you're you're one of the people who i think absolutely is the epitome of someone who flips a switch it's you it's almost like oh i'm looking kind of looking at a different person right now and then if you flip it back once the fight's over you flip it back i remember after the hayden brown fight man i walked into the cage with you and you were you were just chatting with everybody everybody wanted to come up and talk to you everybody was like pulling you from side to side and you were trying to talk to all of them and you just you flip that switch right back but when you were in there man it was it was fight mode so you know anybody who wants to understand what that really is because i feel like you know if even for myself i don't i don't think i have that in me that that switch even when i played football it was never it was i never really had that and so like that's something special and so yeah anybody who hasn't been out to see one of your fights i think that that is something that to look for especially you know your fight so um so nick how do you like fighting for stuff <laughs> hold on <laughs> <laughs> Nick's wife fun. has told me that I am not excited enough when I ask people how they like fighting for Steel Fist. Uh, for real, you know, I love this organization. I love being a part of it. I, I, th they have given me so much. They've given me so many opportunities to um, enhance my knowledge of this sport that I love and to be a part of of meeting uh, amazing people, uh, dedicated people. This this organization has given me so much personally i really love to hear what they're doing for other people what they do for other people and you know how and, and, and of course i do always say like what could we do better because if, if you if people aren't correcting you then you're just going to keep doing the same thing and if you're doing something wrong you need to you need to change it so i do always say like what could we do better people you know i think uh bryce gamlin just wants to keep his gloves that's his big complaint as he's always like why don't you let me keep my gloves so you know we're working on that we're trying to make that, that better but you know how do you how do you enjoy fighting for still fist and uh you know what could we do better 
I, I've known Kevin and Pat a while and I fought for different shows, promotions, and not to say I'd never fight for another one, but whenever I, I do a steel fist show, um, I don't worry about, you know, fighters falling off or if their blood work's going to be in, you know, they stay in great communication. They're very professional. They do set up great matches. Like it, it's never really been like the fights that I've seen, they're all winnable fights on both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just who puts in the training, who does it, who capitalizes, you know, it's, it's a, a great card every time. It's not, Oh, I don't want to go to that one. It's not, no, they, they, they plan it out. It's not last minute things. They have structure set there that I, I completely respect, you know, and you know, they, they make it feel like a family environment. Yeah. You know, they, they don't belittle you. They're very accommodating. You know, if you have some kind of hiccup during your, your fight camp or training or something, if you keep in contact with them, you know, they'll, they'll make the world happen for you. Yeah. And you know, I didn't quite get that with other shows. I know not, not everybody's as bad as the other ones, but I feel still fist is great. Fantastic. Awesome. Are we, Can I get a raise guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe pay more up front. Yeah. Um, do you have anybody, uh, of course, any sponsorships, anybody you want to uh, specifically thank before we close out? Um, yeah, I had a, a, quite a few sponsors this go. Um, lucky bell bonds, you know, she, Heather has really supported me from when I was doing terrible in life, bailed me out of jail. She believed in me. She's like, you know, I think you're a good person. You know, you're just hitting hard times. And that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. I was being a bum. I was being a POS and, you know, just, just that little bit more than just the business side of her, you know, showing like just caring, not just about my money. You know, she really helped me out and, uh, you know, lucky bell bonds, they, they helped change my life. And, uh, so big shout out to them. You know, if you want to find out what I'm talking about, give them a call. <laughs> you know, if you're running into trouble. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully you don't have to, but if you do, you <laughs> yeah. know who to call. Bad things happen to good people. But um, and then Elite Vapor and Smoke um, up here. Ryan's a great guy. And then Hard Luck Tattoo down in Spanish Fork. Uh, you know, Nate and JD, they're awesome artists. Awesome artists. When I say that, not only are they tattoo artists, but they also have a band Knee Deep. After uh, the our fights on the 21st they're going to be there and uh the day after i'm actually going to i walk out to head pe walk on by and they're actually headlining with those guys and so i'm going to be hanging out with all of them the day oh, after. that's awesome so that's cool yeah. so that's going to be a dope show you know the 22nd at the royal i believe okay yeah so so those sponsors there that's a big thank you because sometimes i don't have all the funds to dump into to training and stuff so yeah. they help become part of my success they really push me and help me in ways that i can never think of enough all right um everybody you know i say this every single time if you if you buy tickets directly from the fighter it helps them out it helps them out directly it, it really is again it all comes back to helping these fighters become full-time fighters and anything we can do to help them sponsorships uh, are awesome you know the the promotion paying them more money is awesome but also you just coming out as a fan and supporting this person and buying tickets from them is exactly a way that you can directly help them and, and help finance them to be able to do what this thing that they love doing full-time so if you know Nick if if you, you know, this is the first time you're ever hearing from him, but you like him, get a hold of him, get tickets from him. I'm sure you still have a ticket or two to sell. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting kind of low there. You okay. know, a lot of people have reached out. Awesome, awesome. That's but, that we know, love hearing that. I don't think we could ever run out though. Yeah, yeah. no, nope, we have plenty <laughs> we got of room. a place for you here mm -hmm. always. Doors open. Yep, so so get a hold of him, buy tickets from him. If you can't get a hold of him, try to find a fighter on the card. If you can't do any of that, go to stillfistfight.com, get your tickets there, or you can buy them at the door. Uh, at the Union Event Center, February 21st. You can find this podcast on iTunes, iHeart, Radio, or YouTube under the Undefeated by Choice podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Still Fist Fight and on Facebook at Still Fist Fight Night. Nick, thank you so much for coming out and doing this show, man. I always appreciate you. You're always welcome into my home. Um, everybody else, until next time, be good to yourself, be good to each other. I love you. Let's begin.